Rogers is a native of Brookshire, Texas, who later moved to Houston, Texas. Evangelist Rogers was married to Brother Floyd Rogers, who is now deceased. She remained in Houston with her six beautiful children and one grandchild. Evangelist Rogers was a member of the Grant Memorial Church of God in Christ since 1980, whose pastor is God's General Superintendent Albert J. Jackson, Jr. and Lady Minnie Jackson, until her recent move to Raleigh, North Carolina in July of this year. Evangelist Rogers decrees and declares she is saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost and a mighty burning fire. She obtained her license from the Department of Women under the Texas Gulf Coast Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. She graduated from the high school for the performing arts in 1989 with a major in voice, contralto, with focus in gospel and opera overtones. Evangelist Rogers is a motivational speaker, a business owner of B. Rogers All in One Shake authentic seasoning blends and sauces and specialty pies. She is a church organist, a poet, a writer, an interim Sunday school teacher, a graphic designer, a student at Houston Community College with a focus in business administration. She is a certified tax preparer for over 25 years with a focus in sole proprietorship. For over 10 years, she had experience with Pro Se Litigant and C-O-D-E-U-S-C, 1983 civil rights violation, defamation, personal injury, and tort. Evangelist Rogers has documentation of her experiences in law in the form of a 98-page brief, which sits at the Fifth Circuit Court Appeals Archives. Evangelist Rogers was also the Vice President of the Jurisdiction, the Department of Women Prayer Team, the Chaplain of the Christian Women Council, Chaplain of the Swinney District, and was responsible for the marketing, public relations, photography of the Department of Women. She was also a line singer for the Gulf, Texas Gulf Coast Ecclesiastical Jurisdictional Choir and Texas Gulf Coast Ensemble. The Holy Ghost so blessed Evangelist Deacon Rogers with a powerful and anointed ministry called Unwavering Faith Prayer Ministries in 2015 upon the onset of her late husband's illness. Evangelist Rogers has been going forth by the leading and power of the Holy Ghost and is bridging denominational gaps in the continental USA and other countries around the world, South Africa, Brazil, Pakistan, and India. Most importantly, Evangelist Rogers is a mother, grandmother, entrepreneur, intercessory prayer warrior, poet, praise, worship leader, and anointed woman of God who is concerned about the growth of the church, travels around the country carrying the gospel, teaching sound doctrine, holy living. Ultimately, Evangelist Rogers has a great compassion for God's people and the souls of mankind across the globe. Physicians and I were graced with the opportunity to participate in her unwavering faith prayer ministry online a few months ago. We prayed with the prayer warriors online and we keep in touch through Facebook. She has a business. She sells barbecue sauces, seasoning, mixed nuts, and things of that nature. And at the end of the service, it will be displayed in the lobby and you can stop by and purchase some things. She sent me some things for Thanksgiving. We knew that barbecue sauce, it was delicious. So we encourage you all to stop in the lobby on your way out and help boost her business along. So at this time, we want to present to you Evangelist
my door open. My healing, my deliverance. My will. Giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Praise God. I can report this morning, all week long, all year long, that I am saved. I am sanctified. And I'm filled with the precious Holy Ghost and the mighty burning fire. And I do speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Giving honor to, praise the Lord, the illustrious. Praise God. Second assistant presiding bishop, the Bishop Lawrence M. Wooten. I bless you, Bishop. We love you. We love you so much. So glad to be in your presence and none other than the fragrance of this house. Praise God. National evangelist. Praise God. Shirley Wooten. God bless your mother. Thank you for this opportunity. Praise God. And I won't use that phrase. I won't be before you long. We're going to say, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus. We're going to go this morning, praise God, to the book of Acts. To the book of Acts. The first chapter, verse 8 through 9. And then we're going to cruise over to Acts 2, 1 through 4. Acts 1, 8 and 9. And Acts 2, 1 to 4. Evangelists, please read. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Yes. And when he had spoken these things, when they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Yes. Acts 2, 1 through 4. Please read evangelists. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the reading. Hearers and the doers of the word of God this morning. We're going to use for a text, anticipation started a fire. All right. All right. And anticipation started a fire. All right. And anticipation started a fire. And as we all have been studying this text over the years, praise God, we realize that there was something that happened in the upper room that has since changed every one of our lives. Those of us who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I came by this morning with the precursor before Pentecost. Before Pentecost there was the crucifixion. Uh, there was the grave and the burial. There was the resurrection. Then there was the ascension. But anticipation caused the started off 300 to go to the upper room seeking for the Holy Ghost. Anticipation is to wait for with great urgency for something you've never seen. Something you've never expected. Anticipation is to reach out or launch out not knowing what to expect, but with expectation, you wait, and you wait, and you wait. So those who were in the upper room, 
I am sure they came from different places, from different cities, from different countries, but I want to just paint the picture, if I may, for a few minutes, what they were doing on their journey to I'm sure some were thinking, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're on our way with anticipation. They were waiting and going to different places and reaching the upper room. And for 10 days, they stayed there. And they tarried. And they tarried. And they tarried. The reason why some of us are, praise God, prayer warriors today is because then we learned how to tarry. And tarry is synonymous with anticipation. So because when we tarry back in the days when I was a younger girl, we were waiting to receive something from God. We were waiting for God to pour into us. We waited with anticipation all night long. Bishop, we tarry until we felt the presence of God. Yeah. Anticipation started a fire. Right? And I know some of you are sitting there saying, it's a lot of ways we can start fire, but this particular fire is the one that burns up, that, that roots out, that gets all of the iniquity, that stuff that's hidden on the inside of you. The importance of the anticipation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost is because we need to cleanse us day after day after day after day year in and year out we need that cleansing that baptism of the Holy Ghost and as they anticipated praise God I'm sure their minds were wayfaring at first there in the upper room in Acts 2. I'm sure somebody was trying to remember, did I leave the beans on at the house? I'm sure somebody was worried about their wayfaring son. I'm positive that somebody was thinking about their daughter that had gone astray, but when they reached the upper room, they got on one accord. And they were in one place. Can you imagine getting on one accord? Thinking on the same thing. Crying out to God for what we need. Anticipation started. That fire that day. Because they went waiting to receive. They went waiting to hear. They were waiting to hear from God. They were waiting to feel the anointing. There's somebody in here. Now maybe you need to be refilled. Maybe you need to be restored. Because every time I think about the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done for me.
for your children. Reach out for your grandbabies. Reach out for that husband. Reach out for that wife. Reach out for those lost nieces. Reach out for those lost nephews. Reach out for your lost grandchildren. Anticipation, start a fire, and the fire. 